Hello and welcome everyone. I'm super excited to be leading our Social Advertising Trends 2022 event for the Americas. I'm Lyle Undercuffler. I'm the CMO of Smartly.io and I'm joined today by Madeline. Hi everyone. I'm a client partner based in New York and I'm primarily working with customers across the entertainment and retail verticals. We have a bunch to share today and hopefully the next 20 minutes we'll be able to walk you through some of our key findings and insights from our annual report. We hope it's informative and fun. We at Smartly like to have fun. We also hope that there's insights you can take with you to help you achieve your goals in 2022 because that's what we're here to do. Before we start, not everyone's familiar with Smartly, so I'd like to share a little bit about who we are. We're the leading social advertising SaaS platform for brands. Our products and services are what we consider the modern marketing cloud, and that crosses creative, media, and intelligence. We're across both social and CTV, and partnerships include Facebook, Google, TikTok, and beyond. We allow our brands and partners and customers to create ads that scale across channels. And these deliver effective media strategies through actionable in-flight campaigns and real-time data. This cloud supports over 800 existing customers, some of which Madeline is your partner with. Before we get started, I'd also like to remind you to go and download the report if you haven't already. If you simply type trends, dot smartly dot io into your browser to visit the site you can access the report there last during this session if you have any questions that you think of feel free to tap them into the chat and we'll get back to you with our thoughts quickly after the session no q a today sorry about that so let's begin there's a lot changing in social media today i think there's a lot changing in our world today and our annual survey continues to iterate um, and, and become foundational. When we talk to top CMOs, it's clear that 2022 is one of the most challenging and exciting years ahead in social media. Advertisers this year must struggle to juggle a constant change across platforms, content formats, and increasingly talent. What worked in 21 isn't going to work in 22 and beyond. And so we're here to help you guide some of that. As social advertisers, we really think that we must outsmart ourselves. And that all starts with reinventing the ways that we're working that are somewhat dated. As social media, in, as social media investment continues to grow, we're really interested in how this is growing. And maybe, Madeline, you can help me understand how some of our North America brand partners are planning in 2022. Yeah, it's a, I mean, it's definitely a really challenging climate that um, brands are entering into in 2022. I think as with 2022 and honestly every year, um, brands are entering the new year trying to reflect on what's working, what's not working. They're thinking about like what channels are driving the efficiency, what processes are working internally, where are their inefficiencies, what types of things are their teams doing manually that they can look to automate. And I think in evaluating all of this, social continues to have a really growing presence. Um, so just looking at a few numbers from our report, 89% of spend, 89% spend more than a million dollars annually on social media advertising in North America. 52% wow. of those North America brands dedicate 50% or more of their marketing budgets to social advertising alone. Um, and I, most of those NORAM respondents do plan to maintain their budgets, but um, most respondents are planning to increase their Facebook and Instagram spend specifically. And I think the last bullet is like, it's pretty interesting in that, um, you know, Facebook and Instagram making up an even larger piece of the marketing pie isn't necessarily new. And, and, and honestly, it didn't surprise me too much. This is a trend that we've seen for a while, but I think what all this goes to show, in my opinion, is just like what advertisers are doing on social is going to have such a bigger impact in 2022 um, than it ever has before. So now is really the time to think about what is being done manually and how can we think to automate it going forward. Yeah, it's a really good point. You know, I was a former head of marketing 
And I think a lot of those trends aren't necessarily new, but it's the how we get after them that's that's even more important. You know, I think one yep. of the things you totally. noticed was, yeah, this proliferation of platforms is 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 there and it's real, right? It's difficult to deal with. Um, have you seen how advertisers have capitalized on each of the unique experiences that these platforms offer? Yeah, I mean, it's it's a great point. I think like you know, just taking a step back even even further, like we talked a little bit about how social advertising um, is growing. And, you know, even more specifically, we're also seeing that brands are having a growing investment that's spent across a wider range of platforms. Um, so not only do we have Facebook and Instagram in the mix, but we have YouTube and Twitter. TikTok is definitely on the rise. Um, we have about half of Noram respondents um, are buying social media on LinkedIn, um, about one third on TikTok. We have Snapchat and Pinterest still in the mix. So there's there's a lot of channels that are um, going into the strategy now. And I think what's important to remember is like, as you can imagine, each channel does enable brands to connect with users in a unique way. This diversification is a great opportunity for brands to think about what is the best way to interact with their users, their customers, um, in a way that's native to the platform and and kind of resonates with them with where they are. So just giving you a few examples, like I think of TikTok and Facebook Reels, these are platforms where UGC totally thrives. Um, marketers have the opportunity, but also the challenge to stop thinking like advertisers when they're on those platforms and start thinking like creators. Um, then you have Snap, we have brands can leverage really cool tools like AR and VR, um, social content. They can do product try-ons, they can do virtual retail spaces. Um, it's a totally new way of, of thinking. And I think, you know, across social, this really resonates with all social channels for the most part. There's just a rise in kind of like snackable entertaining content that's designed for shorter attention spans. I think we now see all the time that consumers' attention spans are really just getting shorter as they have more social media platforms at their disposal. So um, as always, it's important to really capture the, the audience's attention as quickly as possible. Yeah, it's, there's so many tools in the toolbox. We're almost spoiled as marketers. Uh, yeah. But it's how do you put them to good use and how do you find the time to put them to good use? Because there's more tools than in some cases we can use on a daily basis. Yeah, it's I mean, it's super challenging. I think that's where I mean, we we saw the pain points that came up in the report around um, a lot of processes being done manually. And I think that's exactly where it's now more important than ever to figure out how to automate it. Yeah, and I, I remember managing teams where you want them to focus on the strategy, not necessarily the details. And so I think what you're saying resonates completely with me. Yeah, let's completely. Let's talk a little bit about TikTok because you mentioned you know TikTok and wow, it's explosive. Um, and I think yeah. the shifts we're seeing in the headlines are pretty incredible. Things we haven't seen in ten years. Um, you know, we that growth is it it is. It, Amazing, and and I think you know there there's lots to be learned and lots to be capitalized on as brands. We're also seeing scaling Google ecosystems, and I know we made a recent acquisition at Smartly uh, of into that Google ecosystem. But what are your customers talking about as it relates to TikTok and the Google ecosystem? Yeah, I mean, I think my customers are really excited about this. I I think TikTok is one that's super interesting for a lot of brands I work with, primarily because it's just a really different way of interacting with users um, that kind of challenges them to think of themselves as creators as opposed to marketers. Um, Google is, of course, like continuing to have really strong performance. So that's always exciting um, for brands to be able to figure out and crack these platforms that offer really strong efficiencies. I think all of this diversification, I mean, we, we've talked a lot about this, like it, there are now so many ways to speak to brand, to users across all these different channels that brands now have to figure out a way of 
taking what has been a really manual process and making sure that it can work across all these different platforms. Um, so, you know, one number that really stuck out to me in the report is 73% of respondents said that social media advertising creation involves manual processes. Last year, this was around 72%. So to me, that sticks out like, this is the challenge that is not going anywhere. So it's it's really important to focus on it. And I think like anecdotally, a lot of the the places where I hear is a challenge for automation is just simply content creation, like setting up shoots, um, you know, ideation. Like there's really no shortage of ideas, but it's it's hard to figure out how to prioritize and automate them. And I think some of the most successful advertisers that I work with aren't necessarily automating the shoots, but they're leveraging automation to make the assets they're they're producing from shoots go a little bit further. So taking all the B-roll that they have, creating different variations, compiling it to create different storylines, showcasing different products, um, and then of course, leveraging those assets to then be scaled and personalized across all these different channels. Um, I think that's super important and it's, it's not necessarily about like reinventing the wheel. It's just making the work that is already happening go a little bit further. Um, so that way you have time to more strategically plan those next shoots. Yeah. It sounds like a massive focus on creative and not necessarily yeah. chain, automating the creative itself, but really bringing some process and systems to it. And I think all too often automation is applied to media, not creative. So it's a really great insight. Yeah, when, I mean, uh, it's, I think, oh, go for it. Please, please, I wanna hear. Yeah, no, I think like on the, on the media side, it's like, I think brands have gotten really used to figuring out how to have automation in place there. I mean, there's obviously more to grow. There's always more processes that can be automated, but I think that's a way of working that brands have gotten used to, to figuring out where automation can fit in. And now creative is kind of like the untapped area. Yeah. And gosh, if you have two automated pieces, media and creative together, the world's our oyster. Exactly. That's the North star. <laughs> Maybe we can help some people get there. Um, <laughs> Before we get there, though, I think one of the things that 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 is probably coming up in more and more conversations is sure budgets are growing, the media landscape in social is getting more complex, but there's also a gap in talent. Um, and you know whether that's talent in terms of quantity or talent in terms of skills, are there things that we're learning to kind of help us understand how to solve the talent gap? Yeah, I mean, I think um, this reshuffling really just kind of calls for a rethink, not only on how we go about recruiting, um, but also ways of working. Um, so I mentioned before that, you know, 72% of respondents say that um, there are still manual processes that are involved and that this is really time consuming. I think this has you know, repercussions in, in many ways. Um, of course, time consuming manual processes can be very error prone, um, but it can also just be not the most impactful or inspiring work for teams to be doing. So I think in bringing automation, it really has the opportunity not only to reduce error, but to free up teams to actually be thinking more strategically, which will have even larger performance impacts, but is also the kind of work that attracts really strong talent and retains that really strong talent. Um, and, you know, and I, it also stuck out to me that, you know, 36% um, of respondents have a lack of talent uh, as one of their primary challenges. Um, I think making the work that is, that is going into the marketing efforts a little bit more appealing a little bit more strategic through automation is is one way to bring that talent in and really showcase that in the recruiting processes as well. Makes a ton of sense. Obviously you need talent to be great at marketing. And so that gap of 36% is, is something that we need to keep our eye on and, and really help yeah. uh, bring up the next generation of great marketers. Yeah, completely. Hey, 
I, I loved your theme of snackable content. We're trying to be snackable too today. So let us uh, bring to close a bit of our discussion and, and we can kind of reflect back on the last uh, 15 or so minutes. Um, when I, when I think about where the future holds, you know, brands are really rethinking these customer journeys and consumer expectations are shifting incredibly fast as our behaviors. We talked a little bit about TikTok there. I think it's clear that what worked in 21 isn't going to work going forward. That same playbook is not going to be redeployed in the same fashion. And, you know, if I'm a marketer and I'm trying to grow both a brand and sales, I need to continue to transform my strategy and transform it across some of the themes we talked about today. Maybe Madeline, if you could summarizing a couple of those key data points as a takeaway could, could really help our audience. Yeah, for sure. Um, yeah, I mean, there's, there's a ton to discuss here, but I think three main takeaways that I would, I would want to make sure um, everyone leaves with today is just the need for modern marketing cloud is loud and clear to me. Um, automating creative and media is going to help brands reach audiences at scale with the right message. And this will, as a result, pro propel demand for the, the brand and revenue growth. Um, secondly, you know, there's an unprecedented demand on creative. We have all of these different channels um, that brands are now working with, which allows brands to really have um, unprecedented storytelling available to them. I think smarter ads can be developed and informed by real-time data and applying automation to that will enable brands to do it uh, in a bit more of a dynamic way. Thirdly, the talent gap as we discussed is real. The access to training and tools is super challenging. Um, new capabilities are required for success. So cross-platform mm -hmm. tools can improve productivity and allow for talent to focus on some of the more strategic and frankly, more fun decisions. Um, but with that, I hope that everyone enjoyed the conversation and found it insightful and engaging. Um, I've had a lot of fun chatting with you, Lyle, and there's a lot more to read um, if you download the report at trends.smartly.io. Thanks everyone for joining and I hope you have a wonderful day. Thanks, Madeline. Thanks, Lyle.